Thanks, Danny. <clears throat> um, and thanks to the Parks Foundation and the Park Board for uh, sponsoring this work. It's been a real honor. Uh, this is a, such an amazing, special place. Uh, you know, arguably the most interesting and historic site in the state. And to have an opportunity to work on it has, has indeed been an honor. I also want to <clears throat> acknowledge Nick uh, Whalen here in the front row, who uh, most of the images that you're going to see are ones that he created. And uh, Reese, I think our other colleague, has, has left for the night. But he also uh, contributed a lot, Reese McPherson. So I'm going to talk uh, about analysis uh, of the area and then uh, talk a bit more about use uh, that Danny uh, introduced. And then we'll talk about some concepts. Uh, the analysis is, is what you saw if you were here in December. But I'm, we're going to do it again because that was quite a ways ago, uh, uh, like the time ago. <clears throat> and also, uh, there's probably some new people here. So uh, <clears throat> our site is here, right out the window. And uh, along the central riverfront, there are certain districts uh, <clears throat> that have a, their kind of own identity. Ashur Brothers will uh, become a stronger one over the next few years. Uh, Boom Island, Nicollet Island, and so on. The Mills District is the only one of those that uh, spans on both sides of the river. And it's really the only one uh, that has a strong identity anyway that is on the downtown side and can relate to, downs to downtown. Uh, <clears throat> the parkway is effectively a lineal thing. But at this district, there are forces that are really coming quite strongly from the city uh, to the river at Third Avenue Bridge. Uh, uh, excuse me, at Third Avenue Bridge here um, at uh, Portland and, and uh, Fifth and First. Uh, Stone Arch coming across, it. of course, Chicago coming in. Uh, so it's a place, the post office is kind of a barrier over here then the Federal Reserve becomes something of a barrier. Uh, so this is the place where, you're most, where there's the most access from downtown to the river. Uh, this is a view of the study area uh, from the roof of the Fujiya building. To get you oriented here is the edge of the roof. And uh, you know, I think you uh, understand where we are basically from that view. This is a view from the other side. Um, of the river. Uh, just to point out, because it plays into some of the design thinking, that there are trees here, uh, and there are volunteer, tr volunteer trees that have come back to the site over here. Uh, but the heart of the mill district is generally without that kind of vegetation, because there isn't much room for it, number one. Um, and also, uh, uh, historically, there really probably wasn't just because of the intensity of use. Uh, historically, this is looking uh, very early at the same site, basically the same view as the last slide. And you can see again <clears throat> that its original condition uh, was as a treed area. Uh, somewhat <clears throat> later, this is the, when the Mills District was really at its prime in the 1880s. Uh, and our site is right here, our study area, so the Stone Arch Bridge, obviously, Portland coming in. And for the first time on this map, uh, you, you see the Waterworks building designated. And this where it was, obviously, the, where the, the city of Minneapolis got its uh, water from, right at the end of a canal, which came in here and served all the mills with water power. This is uh, looking somewhat, uh, let's see, in the 60s, it says. So here's the Crown Mill, which some of you know, the Third Avenue Bridge and the post office up there. So the uh, Columbia Mill, which was an eight-story mill, is no longer there. But the foundations, which we can still see along River Road that the Fujia sits on, are, are there. Trees are gone. But uh, I just wanted to point out here is that gatehouse and the entrance to the canal uh, still uh, in place. Uh, and uh, there's a bridge here. This is the end of the Stone Arch Bridge. It ends in that parking lot now. But historically, it continued across the canal entrance uh, and uh, 
this again will play into some of the concept thinking, which we'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> this is it in, in the, the current situation in the red uh, rectangle. There's a lot of archaeological study that's been done here. All the red marks and, uh, note uh, digs. Here is the Fujia building. Uh, this is the gatehouse. It's uh, shown up in some of our pictures. Uh, here is the gatehouse uh, again. And this is the waterworks building behind it. And this is the, uh, right behind this building is where uh, the, ru the ruins, the foundation of the Columbia Mill uh, formed the basis for the Fujia building. Uh, the red here uh, uh, indicates where archaeological studies have shown there are existing uh, uh, ruins or uh, material. So <clears throat> this bridge, which no longer exists at the end of the Stone Arch Bridge, uh, those piers are still there, for instance. And the gatehouse back there is still there, as we've seen, and, and so on. And if you've noticed, you know, carefully going along River Road, those remaining uh, foundations uh, that are kind of crumbling there, uh, you see <clears throat> in this photo. Uh, there's a regulatory layer uh, that has, um, this, this area has been looked at by a number of public entities. Uh, this by the Park Board in 1990, showing the canal opened up in the gatehouse and Mill Ruins Park. This is probably the most complete uh, view of that, and, and in, in effect, most of the recommendations are development of this core idea that's been around for over 20 years. Uh, the city of Minneapolis also did master planning in the area. Um, you can see the dome and the riverfront down here. And for our study area, they really showed um, about the same as that previous park board uh, image, that is the canal restored um, and uh, the gatehouse restored. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, more recently, the Heritage Board, St. Anthony Falls Heritage Board, did a study. They show Portland, um, the, the desire for it to become more of a gateway to the river as well as one at Third Avenue. Next, uh, in process, I think almost adapted, is the St. Anthony Falls Heritage District Design Guidelines which the Heritage Preservation Commission will use to evaluate any project that's built in the area. And um, again, basically they support what the other regulatory people have said uh, with a little more specificity. I think you can read here the basic uh, idea of uh, <clears throat> effectively about respecting the uh, historical integrity of, of the uh, uh, patterns on the land and the historic uh, ruins. One of the significant issues, uh, Danny described that central area as an area of convergence. Well, it's almost, you can almost say it's an area of, of, of collision in a sense, where you have uh, Portland and 5th and 1st uh, and the Stone Arch Bridge all coming together at, at the point where the whole River Road Park Strip is really its narrowest and most constrained. Um, and, and that is both a problem in the sense of the traffic that sometimes can be out here if you're on a bike or walking especially, but it also, uh, if done right, it gives an opportunity in the sense of providing that kind of human energy and vibrancy in one place, that concentration of human energy. The Fujia building itself, uh, we went through it a year ago with a structural engineer and uh, while Anything is possible. Uh, it, it really is not a building that uh, lends itself to being renovated. Um, the, the whole envelope, the walls, the windows, the roof are all shot. All the mechanical systems are, are, are electrical systems are no good. Um, it's, it's a small building that has six different levels in it. So to try to reconfigure it for public use that would provide uh, Handicapped accessibility is, is, is very difficult to imagine. Uh, so um, uh, we concluded that it, it was not practical to reuse it and, and also not the highest and best use uh, for that important site. Um, 
Another characteristic, or a characteristic of the of the area, is this kind of slicing of of uh, characteristics uh, along the shore that that where existing conditions suggest the next generation of uses. So at the Third Avenue Bridge, for instance, uh, the idea of coming down uh, to the river at that, that point. And then the trees and ruins uh, that exist there uh, you know, suggest um, another kind of use and, and so on. So we, we, we use this to kind of help us organize how uses and design might, might uh, be perpetuated into the future. Okay, so now back to uh, uses. Um, <clears throat> see, when, uh, in you don't try to read this, you probably can't anyway, but these were all the comments that came from the public meeting uh, about uses in December. Uh, we organized them, eliminated the duplications, and they fit into three categories. So one would be traditional park and recreation kinds of uses, concessions, water access, trees, venues for music, art, and so on. Another category about interpretation and history, water power, milling, Native American river stories, and the Loch and Dam itself. And then finally, there were a number of comments about just the quality of the space, talking about it being balanced and for all kids and families, residents and visitors, four seasons, look to potential partners for uses. Think big, that's uh, an important site. This is a, a place to, to uh, you know, be careful, but also to think big, and so on. Uh, this is the diagram that Danny showed. Again, this sort of intense uh, nexus of activity here with more quiet zones on either side. <clears throat> so uh, the this zone uh, is the uh, Mill Ruins zone, and it, because of, you see here uh, in this model, the uncovering of the ruins that exist in front of this building, in front of the elevators, uh, and those rooms, those ruin foundations can become room, rooms that can support a variety of different program uses. And, and one kind might be that uh, the, those uses that could come out of this institution, Mill City Museum, or the Guthrie or McPhail, for performance or educational purposes. Um, the uh, character of this area is, is, is quiet. Um, it's, it's the kinds of things you could interpret there would be milling, and the canal terminus, the, the tunnels are, are accessed right at that point. And uh, again, I think uh, last time there was a discussion about Native American stories. And, and one idea might be that because Spirit Island, uh, which uh, had significance to Native people, was located here, that this might be a place where either in, these, in this forested area or in one of these rooms, uh, there might be interpretation of that story. And here you see from the River First proposal, uh, the jetty that goes out is made accessible to people. And the idea from that proposal was that Spirit Island uh, would, have, would be lit from beneath the river and be a kind of a glowing ghost-like uh, figure of its uh, former self. Uh, the Convergence Zone. Uh, again, we've talked about how everything's kind of coming together here at this pinch point. Uh, the, so the character of it is it's very active, it's multi-use, or multi-level. Uh, it's a bridgehead of, of this National Historic uh, uh, Engineering uh, uh, structure, the Stone Arch Bridge. It has, it's the place where linkage is maybe the clearest to downtown through Portland Avenue. The kinds of things you could interpret there would be around water power, particularly with the canal and the gatehouse and the lock and dam. And, uh, a dynamic crossroads would be the, the, the sort of overarching character. Uh, the third zone where the Fujiya building is, is, is uh, we call Park Pavilion. And uh, this is the, the, the current site of the building and also where we think a, a pavilion could be. We've outlined some other commercial buildings that they're either commercial now or or, or in the case, let's say, for instance, of the post office garage, 
uh, may well be in the future. And so it seemed to suggest that, that uh, a food and beverage use here and, and advancing downtown similar uses uh, might make a kind of a connection uh, that would, where there's uh, you know, something for a pedestrian on every block to draw you along. Uh, the character there is, is again quiet, as Danny had mentioned. Uh, there's a growth of trees, where, uh, unlike any other place here, where it would be shaded. Uh, the kind of interpretation, well, the Waterworks building was there. It's also a place where the sawmills, the earliest mills on this side, were located. Um, and the experience, it would be really of, maybe in the overarching sense, of a park pavilion with beautiful outside spaces, as well as inside spaces, and services like toilets, a warming house, uh, maybe a place you can get some air for your bike tires. Okay, the third part is is some design concepts. Uh, I would say that you know fundamentally what we did was was develop ideas that previously existed in, in that 1990s uh, park board study. You see again the, the three zones, and that under that this kind of slicing of different functions. So starting at the Third Avenue Bridge a suggestion that uh, an old stable that was here, the, the ruins of which still exist, would be the basis for a new stairway that came down from 3rd Avenue towards the river. Uh, the area of that's, that's forested now would be a, a tree garden, then the food pavilion, then the restored uh, gatehouse, canal, and, and bridge, and a place where uh, water play might happen. On the other side of the, of the gatehouse, that sunken condition that you saw in that old historic photo uh, could provide a performance space. Um, at the end of Portland, uh, you know, if you want to get down to the water there right now, you need to do that. And so there's a suggestion here that there be a, some kind of pylon that would mark a stairway where you could go directly down uh, to, to get to the tunnels and the water at that point. And then beyond that, uh, the exposed mill ruins and the extension of the jetty out to Spirit Island. Uh, I mentioned that there's all this traffic coming together and maybe the biggest challenge and also opportunity one of the big ones is, is how to manage all of that together. Well, there's an idea here um, represented in this drawing of a shared street. Uh, this has been uh, a practice that has been uh, explored and developed in Europe and used for quite a number of years and is starting to make its way here. Uh, and so you, you see River Road coming uh, up from both directions, but when it gets here, the idea is that it's a, it feels more like a plaza than a road. So uh, next slide, Nick. So the conventional situation now is cars, boulevard, bike or bike path, boulevard, uh, pedestrian path, where every, all functions are segregated. Um, this shared street uh, reads primarily like a pedestrian uh, place and cars are also on it so that all the signals are kind of reversed instead of everybody having their own little space to uh, you know operate in they operate together uh, but the dominant signal is about pedestrians so you can see uh, in the square here kind of what that looks like again when you move from the more segregated section to this place where in effect, it's a large plaza on which cars are allowed. Uh, here are some examples uh, from Europe. Its the primary characteristic is that paving, a universal paving extends kind of edge to edge without a strong curb. But things like planters or trees or bollards uh, sort of just delineate uh, the place where pedestrians and cars uh, would tend to naturally segregate. Uh, some of the other uh, features of, of the concept is the extension of these walkways. So you see the walkways that exist now 
down in this lower area in the lighter red. So each of the darker red is uh, an extension of that kind of uh, walkway across the canal, across this railroad bridge, a little dock that could go out into the river, uh, and this sort of um, almost amphitheater-like that could sit into in the uh, excavated canal. Uh, plantings. Uh, I pointed out in that earlier picture that there's plants here, trees here, and trees down at the end. And this is what is just happening naturally, uh, where uh, all these plants are starting to grow up among the ruins. And so that zone in between we see as the domain of these volunteer plants. They may in fact be cultivated and planted, but the character and the species would be those of native plants uh, finding their, back, their way back into a, a built environment. And here's an image from an industrial park uh, uh, reclaimed as a public park in Germany to give you sort of a sense of that plant material uh, character. Uh, water in the area, uh, primarily, again, mentioning the canal being restored, but the kind of places that might be made uh, in this zone or down in here, enhanced areas where you can uh, get your feet in the water uh, within the plaza, uh, have both places to sit but places to splash around as, a, as uh, well as a kid, but as anybody. Uh, there's a layer underground. Uh, amazingly, all of these are tunnels. Uh, we had a chance to get into some of them a couple of weeks ago. And uh, that, this is a picture from perhaps the widest part of those tunnels. Uh, currently, the water is, is too deep to move through in certain areas, uh, but there's a lot of space down there. And they do present a, an option, an opportunity for some kind of interpretation like this old uh, submarine base uh, tunnel uh, in Italy, which has been turned into an exhibit. So um, there is that potential, particularly in this area where the tunnels uh, now uh, come to the surface or come to the uh, lower uh, uh, river level. So uh, here is the before view, the current view of this area. And here is the after view. And we're going to look at each of these three areas in a little more detail. And maybe, Nick, you want to do that again, go before. Uh, and you see, just to get yourself oriented, here's the parking lot that's out there, the Crown Mill, the Fujia, and the gatehouse is right underneath that parking stretch. There you go. So let's look at this area first in more detail. So this is the, I mentioned a new stair being proposed to come down to this level where the tunnel access uh, are. There are three of them. Uh, this the flat area, which is where the Midas Mill stood until uh, 25 years ago, uh, could be developed as a place where uh, temporary uses might be, such as food trucks, which we're showing here. Uh, it could also hold uh, an inflatable structure. There's some really beautiful ones that we've seen examples of that might be up for a wedding or some other event uh, and then down again through most of the time. And, and the uh, exposure of more of the ruins as you move in this direction. Uh, so here you see the existing condition with the three tunnels and here you see the addition of these linkages and the stair that goes up and some markers that would uh, denote it from uh, afar as a, as a point of uh, dropping down to the river level. And this would be that overlook where the food carts might be. So looking at the, the next, the middle zone, uh, gatehouse again, and this is this, this uh, sort of amphitheater-like that's created in the tunnel. I mean, one of the challenges is that we can't recreate the whole tunnel. So how does it end? Uh, it doesn't want to just be you know, a sheer walled uh, pit. Uh, so we're proposing that it be sort of terraced down, become what might be a performance space, have some water that could uh, splash, you could splash around in down there. Um, bikes might be routed uh, 
this way uh, while cars are going that way to eliminate uh, you know, one <coughs> potential conflict um, uh, in this pinch point. Uh, There's a suggestion here, I, I, I pointed out earlier that these piers underneath this bridge uh, exist. Uh, when this bridge is put back, it would be possible to make a, a weir there, where the water level here is controlled and constant, uh, even as the river goes up and down over here. And that could allow, uh, you know, wading depth water uh, to be uh, uh, another place for people to, to uh, splash around in. So you see the before picture of the parking lot and the after picture with those features I was uh, describing. Um, the paving, uh, I might just point out here, uh, even though it's, uh, you know, the central idea here is that it kind of goes from side to side, it can uh, kind of break open almost like, uh, you know, a tree bursting itself through the asphalt. Uh, that kind of volunteer uh, aesthetic uh, so that, uh, you know, trees could, there could be more trees, there could be more grasses. We weren't so concerned with exactly that, you know, the vegetative material at this point, uh, but it's a very flexible system is what I'm trying to say in terms of uh, developing detail. Uh, the third zone uh, then is the park pavilion zone. So uh, you, you, again, I was pointing this out in some of the earlier photos. These are the remains of the Columbia Mill. This is actually the view through the trees from that treed area of the river. Um, and here you see that same wall again, only the dirt behind it has been excavated. There is a new park pavilion building here proposed, built on the foundations of the Columbia Mill. Um, you can go from the river uh, up and climb along that foundation wall and get up to uh, these ruined rooms where um, you could get uh, a bowl of soup or a sandwich or a glass of wine and move from here like you do at Sea Salt or Tin Fish on Lake Calhoun and uh, enjoy the view. Uh, I might also point out here that uh, this is that stable ruin at 3rd Avenue where you could take a stair down to the uh, this former rail connection, which is still a story above River Road, but then take a, a walkway down to River Road itself. Uh, looking down First Street from Third uh, Third Avenue, the uh, before picture, and again, this is you can maybe just see a little bit of that ruin poking up there, and then uh, the proposal uh, where more of that wall is is exposed, the walls are exposed here to make a kind of a space that would, uh, might be secure feeling because of the height of the wall surrounding it so you could maybe feel secure letting a kid run around or at least uh, uh, you know, feel the shelter of a, of a defined space. Uh, and then a glassy building uh, really set up for viewing overlooking the river but also a stairway and an elevator that went up to a uh, public viewing platform on the top. So you saw this picture earlier of, from, taken from the roof of the Fujia, and uh, here is the after. People on the roof, uh, people down on the lower level where the toilets and the uh, bicycle air might be. Uh, kids can splash around in the shallow water here. Um, and Nick, maybe go back again, there you go, just to kind of get yourself oriented between how it, it took us to how it changes. You see that parking lot over here, and then the after. And in the winter, uh, the pavilion becomes a warming house. Um, uh, this shallower area could become a skating uh, area. Uh, there may be uh, programmed uses that could be in the uh, some of the Mill Ruins Park foundations that might be uh, provided with heaters or temporary covers. Uh, so we have been thinking about uh, 
use through the winter as well. Uh, and, and that is um, the end of my presentation. I'm going to turn it back to, to Danny. Thanks so much, Tom. Uh, so, so I said we were here in HR and were thinking about the potential uses, but also uh, a, a revenue strategy to think about how some revenues might be able to be generated on the site through park uses um, that would help minimize any ongoing operating burden here. And, and one of the things that, 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 we, that we thought about, and, 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 and an, important, an important example, um, is, is food. Food is loved in parks, things like sea salt, if you go to the next slide. Um, sea salt makes $2 million a year. They make $2 million in sales. Um, the park board winds up getting 12% of that, which is actually nationally, generally, pretty good um, in terms of a deal with a restaurateur there. Um, but I use food, and in particular sea salt, um, as an example because I think that drawing the uh, parallels between the downtown riverfront and this site and Minnehaha Falls is really instructive. Um, if you go to the next slide, you see that in terms of visitation, downtown already has more visitors than Minnehaha Falls. Um, I think one of the, the interesting things to, to see, though, would be how long people stay there um, and the differences between them. Uh, one of the reasons why Sea Salt is able to do $2 million in sales a year is because you can plan to spend the day there. If you go to the next slide, um, look at all the use the uses you have. You have three different distinct gardens. That it, it hosts more than 500 picnics every year. There's a volleyball court. You can rent bikes. You can do all of these things. In fact, Minnehaha Falls is, is, is my personal favorite along the, the chain, uh, along the, the, the Grand Rounds. I spend the day with my wife out there when, when I bring her out here. Um, and I think that just thinking about the diversity of uses, the ability to take a site like this and have a list of uses that are not the same as this, but are right for this site and this place um, and, and this context are what's most important. So I'd encourage as uh, we look and we'll leave you with this overall schematic plan that ultimately thinking about the diversity of uses the ability to provide lots of different activities for all different age ranges, but also services uh, to make a place that is vibrant in that people come as a destination, people are attracted when they're riding by, but ultimately they stay for hours and hours. And so as we begin to talk about this, and, and I hope that we have a, a, a lively conversation here tonight, um, Remember that none of this, this is not a, 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 if I will, a design per se. This is a design plan, a design framework, a conceptual framework, really thinking about some key moves that might define different places. Some key moves like uh, Bill Ruins Park and, and thinking about a next phase there. Thinking about opening up the gatehouse and what that would mean for a central area of convergence. And then thinking about building new structures on the Fujiya portion of the site in order to help make it a year-round destination. So with that, um, looking for any questions, volunteer.